Hello fellow miniature painters, my name is Kuro Cleanbrush, and today I would like to teach you how to paint sky earth non-metallic metal, or as some just call it, chrome or very highly polished steel. All right then, so let's rock and roll with some old school 1980s looking super chrome heavy metal effects painting, um, also known as Sky Earth Non-Metallic Metal. This effect is, is a lot of fun and I'll, I'll be honest, I really, really enjoy doing this, uh, doing this effect. But it's also fairly time consuming a lot of the time. So, uh, oh and, I have to issue my standard disclaimer with all things non-metallic metal. It's pretty formulaic. And if you stick to the formula, and you believe in the formula, and you get to the end, it'll look cool. But almost right until the very end, it will usually look like junk. And that's just because th there will still be some base colors showing through, and we won't quite have that contrast built up until the very end. So if you're s first trying this technique, and you're like, oh man, I'm not, I'm not sure about it. Please persevere until the end. You you will enjoy the results if you do. And with that disclaimer out of the way, let's uh, let's get started here. Here's a Primaris Marine that I painted with this technique um, a few months ago. Like I said, it was a lot of fun. But a Primaris Marine is much too large of an object to teach you this technique on. So we're going to do a little rounded shield. I had a bunch of these lying around. This is one that I had done a few uh, few years ago now, actually, just um, just attempting to showcase the technique, and unfortunately that video never turned out, so we're going to make up for it with a new one. So I've got another one of these little rounded shields already primed in white, and then I'm going to use my old faithful Reaper colors to try to reproduce the effect that I used on the Marine. With all non-metallic metal, but especially with chrome, it's very important that you have a very, very dark near black color, which we'll use brown liner for in this case, and you need essentially a pure white. Uh, oftentimes you can get away with a little bit of an off-white, but for those highest glint points, it's nice to have an absolute pure white. So we're going to use, guess what, pure white. It's kind of one of those simple choices for this, uh, this color. However, we need to have, as you can see on this shield, we need to have a very dark horizon line kind of lighten up as, as the ground comes into the foreground. And for whatever reason, every time someone does this chrome effect, uh, it looks like they're standing in a desert and you've got this beautiful blue sky and this, uh, this, this brownish earth underneath. So I've got progressively lighter browns, almost to like a, a leather color that we're going to go ahead and use. You do not need to use this many colors, but I wanted to minimize the number of steps in blending, so I'm an engineer by trade. I tend to be very formulaic. I like to do A plus B, B plus C, and just move my way down the line. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more later as we go. And then you need to transition from your pure white up through kind of your your lighter blues all the way up to a very brilliant blue. We may not go as dark as I went on this shield, but we'll go up to this ice blue and that'll be a very brilliant blue. When that's all put together and put on uh, my traditional wet palette, it looks, it looks kind of like this. Now, I did half and half mixes between all the colors. Some of those may be a little stark when we go to apply them, but we'll just have to give it a try and see which blends need smoothing. But with that in mind, let's let's get moving. So first things first, to illustrate this effect, I'm going to kind of want to have some dark in the area. If I leave this whole thing white and the cup white and then paint the effect, you're going to be like, oh, that's that's not very shiny at all. And it's actually just an optical illusion. If everything else is white, it makes whatever we worked on look not quite as bright. So I'm going to very quickly get some of this brown liner and I'm just going to slop it around the edges of the shield. I'm not too worried about coverage. This is not necessarily part of the technique. It's just there to make everything else look uh, just a little bit, or to pop just a little bit more. So go ahead, slop that on. But this is also the first color that we're going to use now that we're now that we're rolling here so 
I'm going to clean off my brush so I can do a little bit of precision work here and shape the tip. And now the first thing that we want to do is we want to draw this horizon line, this very dark line. So I'm going to go ahead and load up my brush with the brown liner and I'm going to get most of it off on my thumb like I, like I usually do whenever I want to do any precision work so that the bristles glisten with the paint but they're not oversaturated with it. And then I'm going to draw a line that's approximately halfway down the shield. Once again, this is, this is your horizon. It's not going to be perfectly straight, so you want to add a little bit of sweep and fall like there's some, some hills or, or something causing a, uh, a breakup to the, just the blandness of the horizon line. I didn't put it on dark enough. That's okay. The first pass through, we're just trying to get the shape. We're not trying to get complete coverage. Then I'll go ahead and load my brush up again get most of the paint off again and we'll go through and we'll refine things a little bit so now I'm gonna make sure I get darker out towards the edges of things that's looking pretty good go ahead and bring down a little bit of your color that will make it easier to blend into the uh, colors beneath later so I, I like to go down just a uh, just a little farther than I plan on having this color take up and it might it might need a quick third coat I live in a fairly uh, arid location most of the time so I don't get to do a whole lot of wet blending my paint just just dries too quickly and I don't try to use any uh, drying retarders or anything else like that let's go ahead and darken it up that last little bit there we go Okay, now that we've got that, I often go through and I put in my off-white. In this case, I would reach for my ghost white. Once again, get most of it off on your finger. I do, I do more painting of myself than I do my miniatures half the time, it seems like. And then you're just going to put in this off-white above your horizon and really just lighten that up. You won't be able to see it probably too well at the moment take my word for that it's there it will come into play more when we start working on the sky but oftentimes if I've made a mistake when I'm putting in my horizon line or it's just like ooh, uh, I don't like the shape of that hill I go in and, and I clean it up with my off-white before I do anything else and I uh, as you can see I'm bringing this down quite a ways into what will end up being the sky okay now let's move right on into the half and half brown liner and ruddy leather mix and we'll go ahead get most of that off and now we're going to start we're going to start trying to blend so we're going to cover up most of our brown liner and stroke downwards towards what would end up being the the foreground of the reflected horizon keep working on that make sure to uh, make sure that since we're painting a sphere at the moment, I'm making sure to bring the edges up a little bit higher than the rest of the uh, than the rest of the horizon line. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more of that and bring it down and cover up just a little bit more of the white underneath it. Once again, I don't plan on most of this color showing through, but if there's a little bit of it there underneath the color that's going to go on top of it, it will help the blending. Then if you had to take a wild guess what we're going to do next, we're going to go ahead and grab the pure ruddy leather. And we're going to cover up a portion of our 50-50 ruddy leather and brown liner mix. And we're going to keep working that downward. This is, this is pretty red, maybe a little bit more red than I would want to go most of the time. But as long as we leave just a thin strip of it and don't, don't leave too much of it, visible it will end up adding some color interest to the ground and shouldn't shouldn't be too bad this red because it's so red I'm not going to bring it down any further uh, into and eat up any more of the white because um, I want to minimize the amount of that color I'm going to take my 50 50 red stone and ruddy leather and I'm going to work down a little bit further mmm of a nice clay, maybe 
Martian looking uh, horizon going on here. Who knows? I mean, it could be a Martian landscape or, or some other planet with a lot of iron in its crust to give it that red color. I'm gonna eat up a little bit, a little bit more of the white because we're starting to, starting to get down to the very bottom of things here. Don't, don't worry too much about your blends at this point. Just kind of block out your colors so that we can go back later and fix the blends. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab the pure redstone, and we're gonna do the same exact thing. Like I said, it's pretty formulaic. Keep eating away at that remaining white color underneath, and we're going to keep, we want to make sure that each of our layers forms that nice crescent uh, horizon where it's higher on the sides than it is on the edges. And we're going to keep, keep working it down. There we go. You can see it's starting to lighten. We're actually starting to sell the effect a little bit already and let's see I just grabbed pure redstone if I remember right so I'm gonna grab the 50 50 redstone and leather brown this might be a little jarring we might have to go through and hide this a little bit a little bit better do a little bit better transition but we'll put it on first and worry about the transition later and I'll probably eat up the last of my visible white here with this color Trying to reference the camera every so often, make sure you can all still see that it's in decent enough focus. I think we're lucking out with the new camera and it's working. A lot better in my old setup, a lot less in my hair in the camera. Okay. Hey, what do you know? Okay, I'm gonna extend this just a little bit higher in the middle. And on the one edge and then finally we'll go back through with just the pure leather brown and we'll hit a little crescent of this along the bottom edge of the horizon you'd be surprised how much life that this little crescent of light can often end up adding to the horizon. I actually am going to bring it up a little bit more on the left side. There you go. And I would go back through and I'd clean up that little side of things with another color. But I don't want to make this an hour-long episode of me blending. So if you'll forgive me, we will jump to the sky. So at this point, we've already put down that ghost white. Uh, the off-whites don't tend to show up the best, so let's just put down another coat, just just because we can. Make sure that we get a little bit of the blue from the off-white to show up. And once again, work in that horizon line, and then pull it up into what had been the primer coat. There we go. I'm trying to eat up a little bit of the sloppy brown liner I put around the edges. And then I'm going to go to my 50-50 ghost white and aquamarine blue. And I'm going to start making the sky more blue. I'm still going to go down pretty far towards the horizon line with, with this just to start adding a little bit more blue color to the uh, to the sky and my paint's not going very far for me which says that I should probably add a little bit of water to that mix actually I'm going to go down almost to the horizon point there we go hopefully you can see a little bit of that blue it's fairly difficult for me to see even uh, even in the camera here 
but let's let's put another layer of it on to let a little bit more of that blue show through and let's drag it down even further make sure I'm centered for you there we go I feel like that's showing up a little bit better at least at least in real life once that's done go to your straight aquamarine blue and once again see we're, we're we're taking a lot of this paint off very little of it reaches our miniature surprisingly and eat up a portion of the light mix that we just put into the sky making the sky more and more blue I'm going to put down another layer. I find that any type of blending operation is harder to do with your lighter colors than your darker colors. They uh, they attract the eye more, so it's easier to notice imperfections in the the blending job. And oftentimes the colors don't have the best coverage, so it can be it can be a little bit of a battle at times. But just stick with it. Keep lightening up that sky. Okay. And now. Once we've done that, go ahead and grab your 50-50 aquamarine and ice blue. Ooh, that's pretty, that's pretty stark. We'll probably go through and smooth that here in a little bit, but let's, let's eat up the last of the primer. Keep adding this to the sky. Once again, short little brush strokes that will help disguise the edge of the color swath that you're painting. If you have, if you want more specific tips on blending, you can see some of that applied in my other video on blending that might help you out with some of these techniques. I'm gonna go back through with a little bit more of the same color, that 50-50 aquamarine and ice blue, and I'm gonna darken the blue towards the top of the sky layer here. I'm kind of just dabbing it in there fairly thickly. There we go. And then I'm going to grab the ice blue and I'm going to put it on the very top. And that too is somewhat stark. That's okay. We're just blocking things out. Now you know what? I feel like our horizon is a little too white. So I want to move everything down. I want to move the blue down a little bit. And as I'm doing that, I want to clean up the blends that we already have. So let's go back and let's grab, let's make, Let's mix a 50-50 between our aquamarine blue and our 50-50 aquamarine blue and ice blue, if that makes any sense. Basically, we want something a little bit lighter than our first problem color there. And we want it a little thin, just so that it will it won't be totally opaque and will cover well with the blending for us. Okay. Now we'll load up our brush with that. And we're going to go along this edge that's not playing nice. This first bottom edge. And we're going to work the brush back and forth. Which I'm going to pull a little bit from the bottom here. As long as I can keep it thin enough this should work well, and I'm getting way too close to the edge of the table, sorry. Keep working that in. And that's one of the nice things about blocking first without worrying too much about just precise blends, because you might get to the end of the whole process and be like, wait, I don't like my color placement. 
and it will let you see kind of what things are going to look like so that you can go back and fix those those bigger things like color placement before you start worrying about smoothing your blends. There we go, much better already. That's created a new line of harshness, so I'm going to go back and just grab our pure aquamarine and I'm going to zigzag my brush along the boundary here. Once again, kind of pulling up a little bit, or favoring more pulling up from the bottom than coming down from, or pulling up from the horizon instead of coming down from the sky. Just blend that in. There you go, just play with the edge. There we go, we're looking, looking a lot smoother already. Hopefully you can see that. But now we need that sky to be a little bit more brilliant, right? So let's go ahead and grab 50-50 between our ice blue and our 50-50 aquamarine blue and ice blue little bubbles there. Actually, I take it back. Before we do that, we're just going to use our 50-50 aquamarine blue and ice blue. Please forgive the, the web of lies regarding that uh, last suggestion of colors. Let's go ahead and work that along the line. And that's cleaning things up already dramatically. I'm also extending it down fairly far because I wanted to create more blue sky. So I don't care if I if I change the color below it quite a bit. Uh, below it as in reference to the horizon line. There we go. Starting to come alive a lot more. But we need a little bit more of that brilliant blue at the top. So let's go grab a little bit more of that. And we'll put in this ice blue. Which is still not playing well in the blending department. So we'll mix 50-50 between our ice blue and our 50-50 ice blue aquamarine blue mix. That's, I mean, that's always my rule of thumb when I'm doing blending is if I get two colors that don't play nice together, take a color that's halfway between both of them and slather it on the boundary line. It's quite a bit slower than wet blending or a lot of other techniques, but I like it because to me, it feels very controllable and very re repeatable. It's the engineer in me showing through. All right. Now, if this was a competition piece, I would keep smoothing and keep making this better and better. But it's not. It's, it's designed to be a demo that you can watch in a reasonable length of time. So we'll call it quits at that compare it to the the old horizon. I like the smoother hills of this as compared to this one, but I probably but I like the uh, uh, lighter earth that happened in this one. So I probably would if I had more time lighten up the earth on this side of things. But all that should hopefully at the end of end of the day look a little bit like our mighty primaris marine here. And I feel that the, the technique works especially well when you're on uh, plates that are perpendicular to the ground so you get a nice defined horizon line. And in fact, wouldn't you know it, we've got another little shield shape kind of on his, uh, his backpack here and you can kind of see the effect with a little scratch. So hopefully you've learned a little bit from this tutorial. Please let me know what you think and what other types of tutorials you would like to see. I'm a big fan of the new camera setup so I should hopefully be churning out some more videos in the near future.